What's up, guys? Justin here with another poorly reviewed beer from the Unknown Brewing Company in Charlotte, North Carolina. This is 2.5 ish anniversary ale. So, in April, I had the opportunity to taste and review uh, what was supposed to be Unknown Brewing Company's first anniversary beer. Uh, it was a uh, American Wild Ale brewed with strawberries and vanilla and aged in Cabernet wine barrels. Um, unfortunately, it was not ready for uh, that first Unknown's first anniversary. And so they uh, did release it, and they called it 1.5-ish. I guess reflecting, um, they must have been released about 18 months after, their, uh, after they first opened. So in the similar vein, this is again 2.5, and the ish is right there inside the 5, the top of the 5 there. So again, in the same vein, uh, they called this second anniversary beer 2.5-ish. And uh, seems to have been released... Again, in the, in a similar similar vein, about two and a half years after their after their uh, opening, um, it was really one of my favorite beers just to this day that I've had. Again, American Wild Ale, stra strawberries and vanilla, Cabernet barrels. It all kind of came together in kind of almost a uh, a Flemish red style. Um, and so this one is kind of a uh, similar in some ways, but uh, different in others. Notes from the brewery say. Uh, we wanted to celebrate with this wonderful bottle. This beer is a blend of two beers and two yeasts aged in bourbon barrels with cherries, apricot, and blackberries. Cheers to over two years of brewing. We'll check it out. So you can see a uh, considerable amount of head in that glass. Going about two and a half, three fingers worth, I would say. Yeah, yeah, about two and a half. Um, nice orange color. Let me turn on a light. Hold it up. Yeah, pretty solid orange. Uh, maybe some gold highlights around the edges, but generally, uh, I think orange is a good color. A uh, fair amount of carbonation. Shooting up through the glass, and uh, it's pretty well see-through. I don't think I have any chill haze on the glass, but uh, maybe just a little a little bit of matter in there that's uh, preventing it from being totally clear. I'm seeing in about the last minute, minute or so, the about half of that head has dissipated. I'll pour out a little more. This is a 22-ounce bottle, so obviously I'm not going to get it all into a pint glass. But that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good amount there. And still about a finger, finger and a half worth of head that's going away fairly quickly. All right, enough talking. Let's get to drinking. First impression is a, a mild cherry tartness. Um, just a. Not, not 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 super sour or anything, but uh, just a little bit of a, of, a, of a tart a tart note there. Unfortunately, I don't know. I'm not super familiar, super familiar with my cherry varietals, but it seems like it's a uh, would be more of a tart cherry than a, a sweeter type of cherry. Also, I would say uh, apricot skins, uh, more than the fruit itself, maybe the fruit's blending into the, the the pretty fairly dominant cherry berry note. A little bit boozy as well, it is 9% ABV, uh, so a fair boozy note in there, especially uh, kicks up towards the end. Has a little bit of kind of like a a sparkling wine or a, a, a rosé kind of a a quality overall. I think it really makes sense with the kind of the, the diverse. Uh, there's no grapes in it, but there's a, a diverse mix of fruits. I think all come together. 
And with the tartness kind of make, uh, again, sparkling, sparkling wine, white wine, sparkling cider, maybe a rosé, kind of a, a wine note. Um, I think I like the uh, the 1.5 better, uh, frankly. So again, that was uh, one of those beers I wish I had uh, bought and bought several bottles. I said this in the written review at the time, but I wish I'd bought several bottles and uh, saved them, um, sell them as best I could, and, and tr tried them every so often because uh, I feel like that's a, a beer that would have uh, would have aged pretty well. I mean, it would have been nice to just kind of do a little bit of a. Uh, they're not the same style again. As the the 1.5 was a wild ale. This is a, kind of a Belgian style uh, pale ale. I think is pale ale. I think is how they officially describe it. But um, it is just plenty tasty. A bit about carbonation, even in the mouthfeel, and even as I'm looking at it, you know, a couple minutes after I've poured it, there are, there's still a good amount of carbonation shooting up through that glass. Um, so I think that kind of contributes to the the sparkling wine kind of overall feel to the to the beer. But again, really tasty. Um, a nice one. I'll be I'll be sipping throughout the night. Again, it's pretty strong, but uh, I'll be enjoying that one uh, for the rest of this evening. So again, that was the Unknown Brewing Company's two two point five ish. Anniversary Ale, a Belgian-style pale ale. So that's it for this edition of Poorly Reviewed Beer. Coming up this weekend, we're going to be uh, trying some of the, I guess you would call them generic beers that come out of uh, Trader Joe's. Picked up a few of them, and so we're going to try them on Saturday and Sunday. So that'll be coming up this weekend. You can find all of our reviews, video and written, along with news, commentary, and more at PoorlyReviewedBeer.com. You can also check out PRB on Twitter and Facebook. Those links will be in the description below. I will also put a link to the uh, the beers and review post containing the uh, Unknown Brewing Company's 1.5-ish uh, for just a little bit of uh, compare and contrast to the, uh, the 2.5-ish. Uh, please feel free to like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around at Poorly Reviewed Beer.